We're going to take a look now at very basic rules for naming alkenes. Um, and in our class, we're going to um, look at molecules that only have those parent chains and don't have substituents. So we're keeping it pretty basic here <clears throat> in terms of what we're looking at. So just parent chains, um, which we had colored blue in a previous chapter. So when you see these molecules, you'll notice it's all parent chain. There's no substituents coming off of those. So our rules are going to stay the same as what we did with our alkanes. Um, we will look for those parent chains. That should be all you find, no substituents. Um, and it's got to include the alkene, um, which will be obvious on ours. We keep the same roots um, for how many carbons we have, and then we will add a suffix. Um, we're going to look primarily at enes. Um, that'll be if you have a double bond. There's a couple triple bonds here that would end in ine. And then we have to put um, a number. So we have to do the lowest number possible for where the double or triple bond starts. Um, and then we'll see this cis-trans piece. We touched on that with isomers before, but we'll see that that comes into play on some of these. So let's start with the octene. You can use condensed or skeletal structures. I'm going to stick with condensed for now just because it's easy. Um, easier than drawing C's and H's. So here, um, I didn't add enough carbons on because I don't have enough atoms here at home, but we'll just pretend this is the front end of one octene, okay? Um, so when I look at this in the parent chain, oct tells me how many carbons? Eight, right? And then ene tells me I've got a double bond. And where do I put that double bond? Well, it's going to start at the first carbon. So this is carbon one, and between one and two then will be my double bond. Um, so unless it says cis, I'm always going to default to drawing with zigzags. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's my oct. And then I go to the first carbon, that's carbon number one here, and I draw a double bond. So that would be one octene. Um, if I look at this and put some, um, put some hydrogens into the front end of it, I could see that there would be space for two hydrogens, right? That adds up to four bonds total there. Um, and if I rotate this, like there's always two hydrogens there, so it looks the same either way. We'll see why that's important um, in a minute, okay? So next up we have trans 2 pentene, okay? So trans, I said, we can still have that zigzag mindset. Um, pent, we want to think about, that's five carbons, right? Ene means there's a double bond, and the 2 is going to tell me where to put that ene, just like the 1 told me where to put that ene um, before. So let's draw a zigzag, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I go to carbon two, and that's where my alkene starts. And so if I built this, um, it would look something like this, right? So there's my five um, carbons. Here's my double bond at carbon two, you can see. Um, and let me fill a couple hydrogens in for you here. So the prefix trans um, means like across. Um, transcontinental railroad goes across the country or across the continent. Um, so you can see that the hydrogens are across the double bond from each other. You can also see that the carbons are across or on opposite sides of the double bond from each other. I didn't have that scenario on this molecule, right? On this octene, there was no across because I had the two similar ones. But here, now I need to articulate in my name that there's this across feature happening. And we'll see a contrast to that in a minute. And so that's where we use um, trans. Um, and there's a little note here for my alkenes, I only use cis and trans if there's that across kind of option. Um, so this ends up being my trans to pentene, um, and trans we want to keep in mind means across, okay? Um, so in contrast, let's take a look at this cis to octene. So when I look at this cis-3 octene, um, I'm thinking oct, that's going to be eight carbons. Um, I'm thinking there's an alkene, and I'm going to locate it at the third carbon. But I have this new feature, cis, um, and cis means the same or together. Um, we use these in describing genders sometimes also, right? It's the same prefix, so the same or together. Um, so we mean the same side of the double bond in chemistry here. So here's my octene. It's huge, okay? We don't really care about all that zigzag stuff so much as we do the double bond. So can you see the double bond here? 
And right now on the double bond, if I look at the double bond, I can see that the carbons are cis to each other or on the same side of that double bond. And I can go ahead and add some hydrogens on and see that cis or same feature there um, too. So you can see the hydrogens are cis, same side with each other, and the carbons are cis, same side with each other. Um, this maybe looks like a little boat or a cup. Cup, cis, both start with C. Um, and so I always have this um, cup kind of shape, or if I flipped it upside down, maybe a little cup dumping out or a little house or igloo or something like that. Um, so those are the shapes that you want to have in your head and on your paper for cis um, drawings. So if I go here, um, I'm going to start one, two, three, my standard zigzag. But at carbon three, I have to build that cup shape. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see how um, this is what I drew. There were a lot of zigzags. And then I have oh, that kind of cup shape there. Um, don't forget, there's a double bond there. And this started at carbon three. Um, so this is cis three octene. Um, and not only on all of these can I see that functional group, that alkene, but with the cis and especially with the or with the trans and especially with the cis, you kind of take into perspective a group of four carbons to see that trans or a group of four carbons to see that cup or that cis. So you kind of want to start to have that perspective. Um, last one, or I'll guess I'll sketch two more here with you. Three hex signs. So hex, I see six. The three tells me I've got an ein, which is now one of those triple bonds. Um, I'm going to go with condensed for this because I think it's easier. So CH3, CH2, and then I have my carbon that's in a triple bond. It doesn't have any other hydrogen, so that's carbon three right here, four, and then a CH2 and a CH3. Um, we won't be doing much at all with the, the um, ions. Lastly, cyclohexene. So it's kind of like decoding, right? Now we know the code and how these work. Um, so hex is six. Cyclo means I've got a ring and then I've got an ene somewhere in it. So I draw a hexagon. I make sure it's a ring and I put a double bond anywhere in it. All right. And again, I've got those functional groups that I'm looking for um, as I go through those names. So if I move over here and now have to supply the names, okay, um, then same deal. Find the parent, figure out the suffix, and then put a number and a cis-trans if needed. So I count through one, two, three, four, five, and you want to give those double bonds or triple bonds the smallest number possible. So two is going to work well here. Um, I see that I've got pent and a double bond, so it's going to be pentene. Um, the two is going to tell me where that ene is, right? And then do you see a cis or trans kind of setup here, or is it just lonely at the beginning? Can you see that cup? That looks just like the cis. So this would be cis to pentene. All right. Next one down. Let's count our carbons. And if you can see, I want to give that double bond a small number. So I'm thinking, hey, let's count backwards this time. All right. I've got butte got a double bond, so it's ene. Um, where is that double bond? It starts at carbon one, give it the smallest number. And then do I have the cis or trans kind of feature here? I don't, it looks like this one octene, right? When I have a double bond at the beginning of a ring, um, if it's just hydrogens connected to it, you don't have cis and trans. So one butene is it, it would be marked wrong if you put cis or trans on it. Here's a different way of drawing these, an expanded way, okay? Um, so I may need to focus in here on my double bond and hopefully you can see, oh, there's the same together. These hydrogens are together, right? Um, so we'll come back to that. So if I look at my parent, one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got hex. I have an ene in the middle of it and that ene starts at carbon three. And then if these H's are the same or together, then I'm going to put that cis prefix in front of it. Doesn't look like a cup really, but it won't so much in the expanded. All right, next up, we've actually seen this molecule before. One, two, three, four, five. Don't forget that alkynes here is what we have with a triple look a little strange. They tend to be straight, but I have five. So I've got pent, triple bond, so ein. Where does that triple bond start? It starts at two. 
And we never do cis and trans because you can see these alkynes are always going to be straight, so there's no across or together. It's just a straight line, all right? Last of all, um, I have a ring with five carbons in it. So as soon as I see a ring, I'm writing down cyclo so I don't forget that. Then I see five, so I say pent with an ene. And just like when we had one substituent, um, when we just have our one double bond here, we don't need to say where it is, so cyclopentene is good for the name there.